Today, NVIDIA is a core player in the AI revolution. The company is building AI supercomputers for OpenAI, Tesla, and many other tech giants. As demand for generative AI continued to grow, the share price skyrocketed, and NVIDIA became one of the most valuable companies in the world, only 30 years after its creation. The development of the chips that run AI models requires huge investments from the company, and this would not have been possible without the revenue generated from PC gaming graphic cards. This is the amazing story of how NVIDIA overcame failure to become the GPU market leader in just a few years. In the early 1990s, the Microsoft MS-DOS was the dominant operating system on personal computers, and DOS games were incredibly popular. Thanks to the introduction of the VGA standard a few years earlier, higher display resolutions and more colors were available, so game developers were exploring new possibilities to take PC gaming to a whole new level. Wolfenstein 3D, released in 1992, was one of the first 3D first-person shooters. The game was a success, and it was only the beginning. In 1993, another 3D FPS was released. Doom was so successful that is it now called the grandfather of 3D shooters. This genre spawned series of games that are still popular today. Players were able to move in 3D space and interact with objects, but game developers had to compromise with the limited processing power and memory available on consumer PCs at the time, so the graphics were far from being realistic. Meanwhile, in another industry, known as computer-aided design, it was already possible to design advanced 3D models and very realistic animations. The company Silicon Graphics was making high-end 3D design workstations for the professional market. The CGI's in movies like Terminator 2 and Jurassic Park were also made using Silicon Graphics machines. These very powerful computers were also very expensive, leaving a gap in the consumer market for affordable 3D graphics solutions. NVIDIA was founded on April 5, 1993 by Jensen Huang, Chris Malachowski and Curtis Prem, with a vision to bring 3D graphics to the masses. The three co-founders have all previously worked at computer and microprocessor companies, but had yet to gain experience of running a business. Jensen Huang leveraged his network to secure funding, and the company started designing their first chip. The challenge with real-time 3D rendering is that a large number of calculations have to be done simultaneously. In traditional computing, the main processor, also called the CPU, takes care of executing all the instructions of a program, but tasks are typically executed in serial fashion, which makes the CPU inadequate for this particular purpose, no matter how fast it is. NVIDIA's solution is to help the CPU by adding specialized hardware capable of performing certain types of computation more efficiently thanks to parallel processing. This is called accelerated computing, and it has already been successful before in consumer PCs. In the late 1980s and early 90s, the Sound Blaster card started the PC audio revolution, offloading audio processing tasks from the CPU to a dedicated sound card. It quickly became the top-selling expansion card for the PC. NVIDIA designs chips, but does not manufacture them, this is known as the Fabless model. Semiconductor chip manufacturing is a long and insanely complex process, and not many companies are capable of large-scale production. In 1994, SGS Thompson, a European foundry, finally accepted to start a production line for NVIDIA's first chip, the NV1. The final product was an ambitious all-in-one card built around the NV1 chip. The Edge 3D, manufactured by Diamond Multimedia, was launched in May 1995. It integrated 3D video, audio and game port on a single card. When the NV1 was launched, PC games were not designed to take advantage of 3D acceleration, but a Japanese console manufacturer saw an opportunity. Sega was launching the Saturn, a 3D-capable console, and was interested to work with NVIDIA to make Saturn games available on PC. 
A partnership between the two companies was established the same year, and the cards were shipped with CDs of 3D accelerated games and a Sega game controller. Despite its innovative design, the NV1 was not successful. It was expensive, did not offer competitive sound quality, and no games actually supported it, except those included with the card. NVIDIA was facing an ecosystem challenge in the PC market. When Microsoft launched Windows 95 to replace the MS-DOS, it was difficult to predict when would developers start creating games for Windows. Because Windows 95 was still based on MS-DOS, it was very likely that games would continue to be made for DOS. As it turned out, 3D games finally went mainstream thanks to a company that was totally new to the gaming industry. Before 1995, the console market was dominated by Sega and Nintendo, but Sony managed to end this domination with its first ever console, the PlayStation. Thanks to its advanced hardware and a large choice of 3D games, it was a massive success. Microsoft needed a strategy to turn Windows into a competitive gaming platform, and the key was to help developers creating games for the new PC operating system. These games are getting really realistic. Next year I might even play in the uh, big Doom tournament. You might wonder what I'm doing here. The same year, Microsoft was launching the first version of DirectX in an effort to encourage developers to switch from DOS to Windows. However, this first DirectX version did not include support for 3D rendering. Amid the high uncertainty in the PC market, NVIDIA started a new partnership with Sega, this time to work on the company's next console. It did not take very long before a new move from Microsoft forced NVIDIA to change its plans. Reality Lab, developed by the British-based company Rendomorphics, was an API that aimed to make it easier for developers to create real-time 3D games, allowing more focus on the gameplay and the artwork. Microsoft acquired Rendomorphics and modified Reality Lab to create Direct3D, which was incorporated in the second version of DirectX. The launch of Direct3D showed that Microsoft had a vision to take PC gaming on Windows to the next level, but for NVIDIA, there was a problem. They were working on a different architecture. Direct3D has a polygon-based architecture, which means that 3D models are made up of triangles, but NVIDIA and Sega were working on a different architecture, based on quadrilaterals. When Microsoft announced that Direct3D only supports triangle-based architecture, it became clear that NVIDIA was on the wrong path. If they continued to work on the Sega partnership, they would have been too far behind in the PC market. The three years old company was in a critical situation because this project was the only potential source of income and the deal was worth $5 million. Nvidia had spent lots of time and money on research and development and had nothing acceptable to show for it, putting the CEO in a difficult position. Despite the absence of a product, Jensen Huang requested that Sega's CEO pay the full amount. He emphasised that without the complete payment, the company would go out of business. After a couple of days, Sega's CEO consented to convert the $5 million into an investment. This gave NVIDIA a six-month lifeline, allowing just enough time to launch one more product, but this time, failure was not an option. By 1996, the market began to exhibit more favourable conditions. In June, Quake was launched. It was the first game to implement full 3D rendering, making it look even more realistic, but requiring even more processing power. Quake also introduced network gaming. Quake was successful, but PC users faced challenges running the game smoothly at optimal performance levels. This was a significant problem, especially for those looking to compete with friends on the network. As a result, a hardware-accelerated version of the game was created, but developers deemed Microsoft Direct 3D too difficult to work with, and OpenGL, a standard created by Silicon Graphics, was used instead. The game was named GLQuake. On the hardware side, 
a new company was about to get under the spotlights. In October, 3DFX launched the Voodoo One 3D Accelerator. This was the first successful 3D accelerator, quickly becoming the industry standard against which competitors were measured. In addition to their powerful graphics chips, 3DFX had their own solution to help game developers create games for their hardware, the Glide API, which ended up being more popular than the early versions of Direct3D. The Voodoo cards took the gaming experience to a whole new level and made PC gaming competitive again. If you find this content interesting, please subscribe to this channel. It will really help me create more videos like this one. And if you take a look at the video description, you can find more options to support my work. NVIDIA was ready to compete with 3DFX. With reduced staff and using its remaining resources, the company managed to make a new chip in record time. In April 1997, the Reva 128, a direct 3D accelerator, was launched, and this was a success. The product put NVIDIA back on the map. By January 1998, the company had shipped its millionth Reva 128. Even if it did not match the Voodoo cards in terms of image quality, the 128 was cheaper. Its lower cost and high performance made it a popular choice for OEMs like Dell, Micron and Gateway. The company's strategy to beat the competition is to accelerate the product cycle. 3DFX launched the Voodoo 2 in February 1998, almost one and a half years after the first Voodoo. At the same time, NVIDIA launched the Reva 128ZX, the upgraded version of the original 128, only six months after the last one. In March of the same year, NVIDIA announced their next generation chip, the Reva TNT multi-texturing 3D processor. The twin Texel engine allowed a higher pixel per second processing rate, and the Reva TNT offered performances close to the Voodoo 2. In addition to the new performance level, the Reva TNT also showed significant improvement in image quality. However, by the time the TNT was released, the Voodoo 2 had already dominated the market. The TNT still managed to earn design wins with major OEMs and even became the official 3D graphics technology for the Professional Gamers League. NVIDIA started the year 1999 with an IPO and became a public company. In April 1999, the Voodoo 3 was launched. Unlike the previous cards from 3DFX, the Voodoo 3 has been entirely manufactured in-house, instead of selling the chips to third-party cardmakers like they used to do. In May 1999, NVIDIA launched the Reva TNT 2, just in time to compete with the Voodoo 3. The TNT2 was a huge improvement compared to the first TNT, and it was the turning point of the battle with 3DFX. The performance difference wasn't very large, and since the launch of DirectX version 6, most developers were switching to Direct3D. In addition, the decision made by 3DFX to make the cards themselves resulted in cardmakers buying NVIDIA chips instead, turning former partners to competitors. In August 1999, NVIDIA launched the GeForce 256. The new chip had even better performance and faster memory, but the real innovation with the GeForce 256 was the introduction of onboard transform and lighting. Transform and lighting are the first two of the four major steps in the 3D graphics pipeline. They are highly compute intensive, with a set of very specific mathematical instructions performed billions of times per second to render a scene. By offloading transform and lighting to the 3D accelerator, NVIDIA started a new era in the gaming industry, the GPU era. This new paradigm in computing made possible the very realistic graphics that we see in today's video games. Since the launch of the Riva 128 two years earlier, NVIDIA has been demonstrating its ability to maintain a high rate of new product launches, continuously improving performance and introducing more innovations. The GeForce product lineup continues to this day. In March 2000, NVIDIA was chosen by Microsoft as the graphics processor provider for the Xbox gaming console. 
Thanks to this partnership, the company received a $200 million investment from the software giant and the console was launched the next year. By early 2000, there were only three serious competitors left in consumer 3D graphics. NVIDIA, 3DFX and ATI. 3DFX couldn't keep up with the competition anymore and ended up filing for bankruptcy in March. In December of that year, NVIDIA acquired 3DFX, becoming the new market leader. The company later developed new applications for accelerated computing, including simulation, autonomous driving, crypto mining, and AI. Do you want more videos about NVIDIA? Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for making it to the end of the video, and I hope to see you again.